Hello, and welcome to Inspire Tokyo. I'm Chris Gallucci. The Inspire Tokyo podcast is brought to you by Kikoku Shijo Academy in Tokyo, Japan. On this show, we interview leading figures in science, the arts, education, business, and politics to help young bilingual students learn more about potential career paths for their future. Today on the show, my guest is Milad Delfon Azari. He is a PhD candidate and a research assistant at Waseda University. He is involved with the High Energy Astrophysics Group within the Department of Physics. After completing his elementary and high school education in Iran, Milad moved to India and completed his undergraduate studies with a focus on theoretical physics. He then moved to Japan and earned his Master of Science degree in theoretical physics from Waseda University. The main focus of his research is neutrino oscillations and core collapse supernovae. Malad is a great example of what someone looks like when they love what they do. Whenever he talks about physics, he has a grin on his face from ear to ear. His passion is infectious. Milad tells us what it's like working in a laboratory with Nobel Prize winning scientists. He offers his advice on the most important question a young scientist can ask and reveals that even though he can speak five languages, there is one language he deems more important than the others. And with that, here is my interview with Milad Dafan Azari. Mila, thank you very much for joining us today.、Um, so let's just get right into it.、Uh, the first question I'd like to ask you is about、um, how you fell in love with physics.、Um, did this happen when you were younger or a little bit older? Or just h- how did your,、uh, your journey of science begin?、Um, actually, I saw loving physics、uh, when I was really young, I think at about five or six years. And、um, by Uh, I think the first one who asked me a question to make me love physics was my dad.、Uh, he was asking me, like,、um, many questions why this object is just like hitting the earth, for example, and、um, why do we have a lightning in the sky? And these type of questions were always making me think that, okay, how, do I, how, how can I know the answers of these questions? And my dad was telling me, you have to study physics. So that made me to start thinking of, oh, when I grow up, I have to study physics. I see, I see. And now, if, if I'm not mistaken, your dad studied biology.、Yeah. Is that correct?、Yeah. Um, did you ever think about studying biology? Uh, actually, yes. You know,、uh, when I was in elementary school, I, of course, you know, we, we had a topic w a s、uh, natural sciences. And at that time, of course, I was doing great in that topic. But when、um, I g r o w n up, I felt that I'm much more、um, I mean, flexible and or maybe comfortable with mathematics. And as the language of physics is mathematics, I felt that physics is going to help me more in future to understand the nature. I see, I see.、Um, so, right now you are a PhD candidate. Yes.、Um, for our younger listeners out there, can you explain the process of what it uh, takes to uh, earn your PhD?、Uh, maybe beginning from you know, high school and then through university.、Mm-hmm. And also touch upon what is the difference between a PhD student and a PhD candidate? Okay.、Um, <clears throat> For me,、um, uh, after uh, finishing my school education, I left my home country and I went to India to study theoretical physics because、uh, at that time I was believing, and I still do believe, that great physicists are living in India, especially theoretical physicists.、Mm-hmm. And after、uh, finishing my、uh, undergraduate studies, I moved to Japan. You know, at the time that 2008, Professor Kobayashi、uh, was,、uh, I mean, he, he has been a v o l u n t a r The Nobel Prize.、Uh, at that time, I was in my third, I think, my third year、um, university and made me interested. Oh, how about Japan? You can apply to Japan. And I searched about Professor Kobayashi's、um, CV and resume, and、uh, I saw that he's working at a place called KEK in Tsukuba, Japan. And made me, to,、uh, made me interested to apply、uh, to that institute after in getting my degree、uh, after one and a half year. And,、uh, yeah, and I was lucky enough that a professor from that institute accepted me to be there and study like physics and x ray physics under his supervision. So, it, for at the end of your,、um, uh, before you earn a PhD, Uh, D, you have to present a, a, a thesis, a paper.、Exactly. And so you choose the topic of that paper, is that correct? Yeah. And so, what, what cho- topic have you chosen?、Um, 
uh, okay, uh, let me uh, let me explain you. After my master's studies, uh, I mean, uh, when I when I went to Tsukuba, after that I moved to my current university to study theoretical astrophysics. Actually, because I felt that. Uh, and understanding the applications of the particle physics in the nature of the stars and the cosmos is going to help me more enjoy what's going on. And uh, my current project is about cork lab supernovas, and you know our lab is just focusing in that topic. And I am the responsible person to study the uh, effects of neutrinos oscillations in the cork lab supernovae. I mean, uh, neutrinos oscillations, we believe that they have a very key role. I mean, they have a very important role in uh, explosion mechanism of the cold club supernova. You know, since 1987, the researchers are trying to understand the theoretical aspect on uh, the theoretical understanding of the supernova, but still no one could actually make it. And uh, our laboratory, uh, with, with collaboration with other laboratories, are trying to solve this problem, hopefully. Wow. Um, so speaking of your laboratory and the people there, um, you're, you're, you're a very smart person. And I'm sure when you, when you walk into most rooms, you, you are probably the smartest person in that room. How, how does it feel when you go to work and you're surrounded by Nobel Prize winning professors and all of a sudden... Uh, maybe not being the smartest person yes, in the world. Can you just talk about what that experience is like? Uh, definitely, you're not confident to talk about physics in that society, you know, especially uh, for me, um, you know. Um, Japan has really great scientists and each of them, especially in my field, have their own interpretation of the very fundamental uh, topics in, in physics. And I just can say in a very normal talk, it, they, are, they are a brand in physics. So, um, but they are very modest and humble and they're always giving it the chance to present yourself. So, you know, after a few weeks or months, you will be um, confident enough to discuss about uh, physics with them. So, so uh, I personally didn't uh, feel like, for example, oh, these guys are really greater than me because they didn't show that, you know, they were always ready to help me. And like even sometimes that I was not understanding very basic stuff, for example, they were kindly uh, explaining it to me. So it made me even be more confident in, in asking questions and in giving my opinions in that topics. That's so I re I'm really thankful of them. Yeah. yeah, that sounds like a great working environment. Yeah. Um, so you are from Iran originally, yep. so English is a language that you learned yep. um, in school. Do you speak any other languages? Yeah, of course, five more languages. Five? Oh, yeah. what, uh, what, are the, what are the languages? Uh, of course, uh, Persian is a language of the country, but uh, my mother tongue is Kurdish. And, uh, you know, when I was born and when I just grew up, I was, and even still in the family, I'm, I'm speaking Kurdish. And after that, I moved to uh, India. And it made me to uh, to speak Hindi. And uh, after my undergraduate, I just moved to uh, Japan, and that made me learn Japanese. And because of the educational system in my country, um, I learned Arabic also. And I'm familiar with with Arabic language, and um, I mean uh, like daily conversation and stuff. Wow. So uh, I think the, the listeners of this podcast are all um, bilingual, at least. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about how knowing so many different languages has been an asset to your career? Uh, of course it was, because um, imagine uh, as, as an Iranian, I couldn't sp speak or understand English. Um, definitely, you know, the sources and the books in, in English uh, are much more than in other languages, especially like Persian. So, um, and even, you know, uh, in an easy search in Google, mm -hmm. if you want just to search about anything, uh, you definitely can find out um, in, in, in English uh, more than any other language. And uh, of course, um, you know, some, some books, for example, uh, also um, has not been uh, translated yet to any other languages. So I do believe that uh, learning, I mean, knowing other languages is going to help you mm. in, in science too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, a bit of a fun question next. Yeah. So um, during your uh, Inspire Tokyo talk, a student asked about uh, traveling back in time. Yeah. And of course, during the first part of your talk, you... Um, you spoke about physicists from early on in, in yeah. the Greek and Persian Empire yeah. until present day. Yeah. 
if you could travel back in time yep. to a, a certain point within the history of physics, yeah. where would you go? What 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 environment? What era would you like to live in? Uh, at the time that Newton was there. A Newton. Was there. Okay, yeah. why is that? Uh, I do. I do personally love him because he did great jobs in physics. And as I said in my talk, that uh, you know he did that much that everyone was believing that physics is just finished. You know, right? And uh, I was just. I'm just always wondering, and I'm fascinated by his performance. And I'm just, you know, if if. I am able to travel in time. I just want to see him and ask him how. <laughs> right, yeah. How did you do this stuff? Yeah. Um, speaking of traveling in time, you, you spoke about Aristotle a yeah. lot. And I learned something during your talk, uh, mostly about how wrong he was yeah. with so many uh, of his uh, of theories. Yeah. Uh, is there like a joke in, in physicist circles about Aristotle and about how wrong he was, or how is he regarded? Yeah, not, not actually. You know, uh, in in physics and especially in um, n nowadays, you know, physics, we know that the calculations that we are doing uh, is by just our knowledge. I mean, for example, um, understanding of uh, dark matter and dark energy, which are like 96% of the universe that we are now living on, we don't know what they are. And um, many scientists and many physicists has talked about it and uh, they, they gave different I mean, theories of that. And most of them might be wrong, but it, it was written by great physicists. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't nowadays we know that Aristotle was wrong, but we do believe that at his time he was the giant guy. And so we respect him always. I see. Uh, let's see, per during a personal conversation you and I had a while back, you talked about how you wanted to make science more accessible to yeah. younger learners. Yeah. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? Yep, yeah. you know, uh, I do believe that um, for a physicist, um, talking about physics is not um, always a good uh, I mean, point uh, in, in the society because people get bored of physics uh, and uh, mainly maybe they don't like to talk about like those complicated equations and stuff. So uh, what uh, do I believe that is we are, uh, you know, it's our business and we have to somehow explain about our business to others to get their support, actually. It's like, you know, we are a part of society and of course we have to and make the society understand what we are doing, actually. So making these complicated equations in the most easy way uh, helps others to support us. And even it's an advantage even for physics, actually. So I do believe that, um, you know, a physicist should more, I mean, care about what others are thinking of uh, about them. And they have to try to do their best to make these complicated equations in the, I mean, easiest way is, is possible and uh, you know uh, I, I personally believe that when you and, and actually I got it from my professor that when you are able to explain a physical phenomenon in an easy way it means you understood it right now yeah. so that's why you know I always try to make it as simple as possible mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so for all of the junior high or high school students out there that love physics or yeah. astrophysics, yeah. they think it's very exciting. Yeah. Um, what should they do or continue doing? What should they be studying, reading? Yeah, of course. Uh, they, as I said in my talk also, they have to always ask why and how. And then, um, you know, now I'm talking in English and uh, physics has its own language and that's mathematics. As much as they can, they have to improve their mathematical skills and then they have to try to analyze it. Firstly, they have to build the, the, the basis of uh, their knowledge. They have to learn from others and then they have to create something. And I do believe they will be able to do that if they like it. I see. And you mentioned that, um, I think it was when you came to Japan, that's when you got involved with astrophysics. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. And you said that because you might think that that would be more enjoyable for yeah. you. Yeah. Is that something you also recommend for younger students to find one aspect of physics that they can fall in love with? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I, I do believe that. Yeah. And would, so w with that, what would you say is one of the most fulfilling aspects of your work? Is it, is it the journey of discovery itself or within the world of astrophysics? Are you hoping to be, you know, with your, with your researchers, with your collaborators, uh, 
the people that push science ahead to the next level? What, what is it about? I think it? both. Both, I think yeah. Both, yeah. You know, when you are when you are trying to study physics, if you don't like like it or if you don't love it, it's really boring, right? It's like just it's like you are doing something and you don't you're not enjoying it, and it's like a waste of time. And of course, um, it's gonna you know when as you ask me that you know, you're writing your own paper, so in in, in my PhD studies, you know, uh, it's like you will be in the history of physics when you are writing a paper, and as much as uh, you know uh, the journal that you are trying to publish your paper is in, in, in a high impact journal it means that um, you are contributed in that field and you made that field to I mean to to, to have a process mm-hmm. yeah it's I think it's a really I mean uh, good feeling yeah absolutely um, so speaking of contributing to the field um, after your PhD after mm-hmm. you earn your PhD yeah. and maybe this is looking too far yeah. into the future yeah. What's next? Um, of course, I, I, I do love to, I mean, continue my research as a postdoctoral researcher, and I do my best to get, and, and to get a very good position in a very good university in, in anywhere in the world. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, well, Milat, thank you very much for joining You're us. You're welcome. Thank you very much for giving me the chance to talk about physics. Right. Thank you. All right, and there you have it. Thank you, everyone, for listening today. I'd love to hear from you, so please send your comments, thoughts, or questions, or just say hi at hello at inspiretokyo.com. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please share it with a friend. We are always looking for new listeners. And be sure to subscribe to us wherever you listen to your podcasts. See you next time.